Hello everyone. Hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of uh, lead code weekly contest 318. It's a medium level problem, uh, relatively better than other medium level problems. Okay. Uh, the problem name is total cost to hire K workers. So the problem statement says that you are given a zero index integer array cost where cost of I is the cost of hiring the ith worker. You are also given two integers K and candidates. Now we want to hire exactly k workers according to the following rules now what are those rules so you will run k sessions and hire exactly one worker in each session okay in each hiring session choose the worker with the lowest cost from either the first candidate workers or the last candidate workers now in case of a tie like if two candidates have the same cost so what do you do you break the tie by smallest index okay so that means whichever worker has the smaller index, you you, you pick that worker, okay? Uh, so it is shown in the example. So the cost is 327712 uh, for six workers and candidates is two. So what you will do, you will consider the first two candidates. That is first, uh, yeah, because candidates is two, right? So you consider three and two. So here you consider three and two and you consider one and two, okay? Because candidates is two. It says that pick the first two ones and the last two ones. Okay, uh, this is what uh, it says. So now what will happen among these four, which one is the smallest? One is the smallest. So you pick, add it to your answer. Okay, now what is your uh, new array for the next session? It is three, two, seven, seven, two. The one that was present here is already consumed. Okay, so now you consider these two and these two. So this is also two this is also two what do you will do you will pick the one with smaller index so that is two okay so this is what the problem is saying uh, what it says if there are fewer than candidate workers remaining choose the worker with the lowest cost among them break the tie by the smallest index yeah that is what i have explained a worker can only be chosen once okay return the total cost to hire exactly k workers and then we have certain examples so uh, let's jump into the intuition and then we'll see what is the uh, uh, how, how basically uh, we approach these type of problems okay so for example let me pick up the first one okay cost equals to 17 12 10 2 7 2 11 20 and 8 okay these are the workers that i have k equals to 3 these many workers i have to choose i have to hire and candidates equals to four. That means at every step I choose, uh, I, I just consider the first four workers and the last four workers. Okay. So uh, let's see, there will be three sessions because I want to hire three candidates. Okay. So what will happen first you consider these four. Why? Because candidate is four and these four. Okay. Which one is the smallest? Initially your answer is zero. Which one is the smallest? Here I have two. Here also I have two. So I'll pick this one because this one has a smaller index, right? So my answer becomes two. And then my array will become 17, 12, 10, 7, 2, 11, 20, and 8. So these four and these four for the next session. Okay. Now what do you do? Which one is the smallest? This one is the smallest. You add it to your answer. Answer becomes four because two plus two, right? This is also removed. Now what will happen? You have hired two of them, right? Now, which one you will pick 17, 12, 10, 7, 11, 20 and 8, right? So just see, you pick the first four and since four candidates are not remaining from the end, so pick whichever is remaining, right? So which one is the minimum one? This is the minimum. So answer equals to four plus seven, that is 11. So 11 is the minimum cost that you um uh, that you spend in hiring three candidates right so i i hope the problem is clear problem statement is clear right so what are things to observe here right so this is my array this is my array and at each and at each point what i need to do just consider this this is my array the first thing is i divide my array into two parts forget about the h cases the first thing is this is the candidate uh, this is the n number of people. Let's call it n. Okay, simple because the, the word candidate is confusing, right? So I pick the first n people from here and the last n people from here, right? Now, what are the possibilities? I will be picking one candidate having minimum co cost either from here or 
or from here right there is only one possibility if i pick it from here then what will happen this is my boundary let's call it left boundary right initially this left boundary is i have picked up how many elements n elements or candidate elements okay this is my left boundary it points to n plus one th element okay and similarly i have picked up the last n element so suppose i pick one element from here so what has happened this set now has only n minus one candidates so i want n candidates in both of the sets so what i do i put the next candidate in my set basically this is a priority queue not a set why priority queue because your condition says that you want to among these two things among these two things you want to pick the uh, minimum uh, the, the worker having minimum cost so if i have a priority queue right suppose these are two priority queues this priority queue will have the worker having the minimum cost at the top among these elements similarly this will have the worker having minimum cost among these elements right so what i do at every iteration at every hiring process i check this and this because these are the minimum ones okay if if uh, if the left one right if the left one is uh, minimum if the left one is less than this one or equal to then i add this to my answer now this guy is removed so what i'll do i'll put another element here right and since it's a priority queue it will again heapify it and basically sort that element so again at the top i will have the minimum element among these elements now what is what was the next possibility the next possibility was i pick an element from here so if that happens then what will happen this set initially had n elements it became n minus 1 element so i need to add one element so what i'll do suppose this was my tight boundary i'm using the variable names uh, which i have used in the code just for simplicity so i insert the next element here so because in the from here i am moving in this direction from here i am moving in this direction why because this was my array so in my first priority queue i moved in this direction and i added n elements here and in the second priority queue in the right priority queue i move from here to here and i added the n elements right so these two priority queue queues had n elements right now there can be edge cases like the total number of elements if it is less than 2 into n then what you'll do so simple stuff add an elements here and add the remaining elements in the second priority queue this will be something like left boundary is here and your right right boundary comes here right because uh, and these two are uh, next to each other that means you do not have any element to push right so forget about the implementation the main intuition is in your array take two priorities priority queues uh, uh, why two priority queues because you want to consider the first 10 elements and the last 10 elements and those two priority queues will have the uh, minimum element at the topmost point okay you 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 pull that element you pull out the, those elements compare whichever is smaller consider that into your answer and the second one put back that uh, put, put that back into that priority queue from whichever you have picked right if you consider this so uh, put back this one into this priority queue or if you consider this then put back this into this priority queue right and add the remaining elements if you have selected this element add the element present at left boundary if you have selected this element add the element present at right boundary simple stuff you keep on doing this k times because you want to hire k folks right simple stuff this is the main intuition also in my priority queue i have two conditions to sort the first one is um, the first one is um, cost if two workers have the same cost then what i do i sort it based on the index whatever the problem is saying right so this is what I do. Uh, let's see what is the code for this. Okay. I hope the, uh, the the explanation was clear. Otherwise, it will become crystal clear once once we look into the code. Okay. So here I have initialized my answer. Uh, answer equals to zero. Now what I'll do? Just see here. I have two priority queues. The first this is known as left priority queue. This is known as right priority queue. Okay. Then what happens here? Just auto minimize yeah now this will okay right so this left priority queue picks up n elements from the left and this one is picking up n elements from the right or candidate elements okay just for simplicity i'm using those names now what are what is the logic in this priority queue so my key is so i in in priority queue i have a pair and in pair the first element is basically the cost and the value that is the second element is basically the index okay this is what i have uh, so both the priority queues are same you can just see if a dot key equals to b dot key that means if the cost of two workers are same then sorted based on index else sorted based on key right i have done it in the both priority queues now 
n is the total number of elements that i have i have initialized i equals to 0 now what i do i put uh, n uh, or the first candidate elements into my left priority queue whatever i said so new pair cost of i and the ith index right now what is my left boundary left boundary is i why because you have picked up the elements from 0 to i minus 1 right you have picked up these elements so left boundary that means now if you want to pick uh, the next element which element you will pick you will pick the ith element so this is your left boundary okay because you are moving from left to right okay now uh, what we do we i check what are the remaining elements this is a h case why h case because suppose these are this is my array and i have consumed these many elements so i do not have the required number of elements right to to to, to put into my right queue right that means i do not have the candidate elements candidate number of elements so what i do i check uh, which one is minimum uh, is is candidate is minimum or the number of remaining elements is minimum so what i do remaining elements is n minus i right n minus i so it will be mat dot min of remaining elements and candidates simple stuff now what i do run a loop from i to remaining elements put that into your priority queue so it will be n minus i minus one and n right simple stuff right and what will be your right boundary similar to left boundary what will be your right, right boundary so if you have consumed these elements so your right boundary will be this so that is n minus one minus remaining elements because your loop breaks when your i becomes equals to remaining elements so that is why okay now comes the core logic this is the core logic again this code can be shortened but what i have done this is the code that i wrote in the contest hence uh, just to for the for the sake of the explanation i've used the same code it can be optimized like you can reduce the size of the code and all but yeah this is the one so on line number 31 what do you have while k is equal to k is greater than zero that means while you still have to hire more number of folks and left priority queue is not empty and right priority queue is not empty that means if everything uh, falls in, in in the bucket of a good list a uh, good case and then what you do you pick the uh, a pair from left priority queue you pick a pair from the right priority queue now what do you do you check if if the cost in left priority queue is less than or equal to the cost in right priority queue then i add into my answer so just see answer plus equals to left dot pair dot key now just see this also takes care of the index part because in the left priority queue you uh, there will not be any condition that your index in the left priority queue is greater than the index in the right priority queue, right? That that cannot happen. Uh, that is how we have written the code, right? Now, what do you do? You put back the right pair into the right priority queue. So, right priority queue dot add right pair. Now, since we have removed an element from the left priority queue, we need to add an extra element if there exists an extra element in the left priority queue. So what I do, if left boundary is less than equal to less than equal to right boundary, that means there exists an element, right? So what do you do? Left priority queue dot add new pair of cost of left boundary and the index is left boundary and in increment your index uh, left boundary, right? So this was the left boundary. You put this element and then move one step ahead. Else, if your right pair has a lesser cost, so you add that into your cost, you add the pair that you pulled out from the left priority queue back into that priority queue and again if there exists any element add into your priority queue and now route right boundary minus minus because you are moving from right to left okay and k minus minus that okay i have hired one element one one guy in this one right once i come so when will i come out of this loop either i have hired all the elements or one of the priority queue becomes empty so what i do <coughs> at last i check i check on line number 51 that if k equals to zero that means if i still want to hire more number of folks then what i'll do see whichever priority queue is not empty why did the loop break because one of the priority queues became empty so see whichever is non-empty so initially initialize by left pq if that is empty initialize by right pq okay while k is equals to k is greater than zero just keep on pulling and adding into your answer decrement your k and just uh, finally return your answer and then we are good to go right so yeah this was the explanation i know maybe this uh, has become a long video but i just wanted to explain you the intuition uh, code is another thing but developing the intuition is the main thing that we, uh, we we want to develop right so yeah i hope you learn something new from this video do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel in case of any queries do mention that into the comments i'll, I'll revert on each one of them thank you take care bye bye